additions. Come on, what's on the menu today then? Today is beef and potato pie. Ooh, very slimming. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm doing it in a bit of a different style. I mean, obviously, this has been popular throughout England, the north of England for centuries, but also the southwest, my kind of region where I live as well. Think of it as in a pasty. It was cheap, it was filling, it made people feel good, it filled them up when they were working, and I'm doing it in a bit of a different way, using a completely different cut of meat than traditionally would have been used. Minced beef, something oh. that people can buy from any kind of store, perfect, Very fantastic. Cheap. It is cheap, goes a long way as well, and cooked quite quickly, actually, in a different way. A lot of the cooking's gonna be on the hob, and then we're gonna encapsulate it in a wonderful pie pastry. Encapsulate it? Yeah, I love the way you say that. <laughs> Can I just say something that's been worrying me all these weeks? This, your beautifully, perfectly diced carrots and onions. It's, uh, how yeah. do you get them so neat and little? And I mean, it, does that affect the taste? No, well, yes and no. Basically, I know that these being this size are all going to be great bite-sized pieces okay. and they're all going to cook at the same time, yes. which is very, very important. There's nothing worse than having a raw piece of carrot or a massive chunk of celery as you're eating something. You need it for flavour, but you want it to complement all the ingredients together. Like now, like I'm going to chop an onion, for example, to put in so there as well. So it's the sharpness of your knife then, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it, it tools you trade, Linda. Yeah? Tools so, you trade. So great, great pots and pans no. and nice sharp knives. And look after them as well, though, yeah? I think I do, don't I? I don't know. Why? What well, do you... you know, like you, you've got to keep the edge. So you'd use a steel to sharpen it and use it regularly. Don't just use it like once a year by, by any means. And, uh, and also, like, another thing, so, um, like, you don't put your knives in the dishwasher, obviously, would you? Yes, I do. I, okay, well, well, that's, oh, that's, that's the secret of that's, my failure. <laughs> that's going to blunt them then as well. Right. Okay, right. so just a bit of sanitizer, clean them up, and then don't put them in the dishwasher because it will blunt your knives. Thank you. Well, what a day I've had. Ballroom dancing one minute and pond life the next. I think I deserve my Sunday lunchtime treat. And Chef James Tanner has been preparing it for us all morning, haven't you? I have indeed. Such a little soldier. And we've got some lovely guests today. We have Lord Hartford, this Hello. is James Tanner, and Ross Headgardner. Hi, Hi James. <coughs> Hi. So take us through it then. OK, right, so we're going to do a beef and potato pie. Gentlemen, is, do you like yes. beef and potato pie? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah fantastic good. stuff. Right, great. So um, some wonderful ingredients, beef and potato, very classic as well. I'm going to do mine with a little twist as well. And Ross, I did hear... We need to be gluten-free. We need to be gluten-free, Ross. Yeah. We do indeed, and I am. And I've done it especially <laughs> for you, a wonderful oh. short-crust gluten-free pastry, which I'm going to talk about in a moment or so, OK? Can't wait. First of all, need to get that base on there. So here we have a preheated hot non-stick pan. We're going to chuck a little bit of oil in there, not too much, just to get the vegetables going, OK? And the vegetables are... We've got some diced-up carrots. And I was, onions. Uh, remarking on how neatly he dices his vegetables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <For> the machine? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <matter. laughs> no machines here. It's a very right. sharp knife. See? So we've got the, the onion, the carrot, a touch of celery, wonderful flavour, and then also a little bit of garlic goes in there as well. And you want to cook these out with no colour, okay? That's the idea of this one. So we're just going to give it a little stir. Actually, Linda, you I'll can give it a little stir. stir. Why not? Now, let's talk about the star of this, the main ingredient. Uh, we've got some wonderful minced beef from the Ragley Farm Shop. Really, really great stuff. And traditionally, you wouldn't really use minced beef in this. No. But I am for speed and also for cost and everything yeah. else. And flavour, more importantly, it's wonderful. So I'm just going to whack that in. Now, I just want to break and this up. Let me ask a question. Yeah. What's the difference between this and cottage pie? Very, very great question because they are very similar, yeah. but I'm adding a few different ingredients um, uh -huh. to jazz things up and obviously we're going to encapsulate it in a wonderful uh, gluten-free pastry. But very similar, you could use this same base, put the mashed potato top on it and, and you're there on exactly that. Okay. So as you can see, we've just got that colour change going on there with the beef, okay? Yeah. Which is great. Now, I'm going to leave that there to do its thing. Linda? We're going to have a little dance. I'm going to go, I'm going to go over here. here then. <laughs> Obviously, it's beef and potato, as I said. So we're just going to block off the potato. And then this doesn't have to be quite as fine at all. I'm going to get rid of the Any special there. kind of potato? Um, I, I love using, I said it before, uh, with King Edward's potatoes. I don't think they're too heavy and glutinous. Yeah. And um, I just think, uh, you know, something like this, it doesn't break down too much. You get that chunkiness, and it's a real kind of man's supper. 
Oh, absolutely. You know? oh, oh. And we're all men and here, aren't we? <laughs> and, also, and also a ladies' supper as Thank well. Thank you so much, yes. And, uh, you know, with the gluten-free element as well, we're going to add a bit of flour in there, but again, gluten-free flour. Do you want to talk to us about the gluten side of things with yourself and what you find with it? It's difficult to work with gluten-free flour. Um, well, gluten is uh, in wheat flour, um, oat flour and barley flour, so yeah. it really limits you. Yeah. And they all have, the gluten is the elastas, elast elasticity in, yes. in the flour which holds it all together. So mm -hmm. when you start working with gluten-free flours, it, it, it's hard to hold it together and it, it gets quite crumbly. Yes. It, is this going to taste to, to me like a normal paste, short crust pastry? I, I, yeah, I think, um, yes, I, I don't think you'll notice it that much really. Basically what we've done here is it's two parts of the flour substitute that I'm using, which is a gluten-free flour, to one part fat as well. You might find it's more 50-50 in a normal short crust. So hence why you don't want it to be, uh, you don't want it to be too dry because it will fall apart. Won't is it, it healthier exactly? then? Um, well, there's less fat in it, yeah. Well, then it's yeah. cool. The best. So, so this is our substitute flour. So we've got a mixture of different potato starches and potato flours and stuff like that. And um, only a little bit though, yeah? So that just helps bind things up. But I still want to cook it out. I want to treat it like a regular glutinous flour and cook it out as such, okay? Now, once that's gone in there and done its thing, let's, um, you know, get this a little bit more interesting. Look at this, a good dollop of beef extract, okay? Now this is gonna add to a wonderful thick syrupy beef flavor and help with a kind of a nice thick gravy as well. Also, believe it or not, I know it might seem weird, but a good old blob of tomato ketchup goes in there, be quite generous, two spoonfuls of that. And then for that little spicy taste, can't beat a bit of Worcestershire sauce. Bit of Worcestershire yeah. sauce, okay? Now, you give it all a good mix, and it doesn't matter if it goes a little bit sticky, I want it to. I want it to cook out, I want it to get that flavour. Now when it's like this and it's really starting to coat those individual ingredients as you can see there, we're going to add a good old glug of stock, okay? Beef that, stock. Is that beef stock? Yes yeah. it is, yeah, beef stock. Now, you could do this recipe with lamb mince as well, um, but I'd cook the mince first and strain off any excess fats because you don't want it too greasy, okay? Now, give it a good stir up, pinch of salt, you can correct the seasoning towards the end, lower the heat, leave it to cook out 15 to 20 minutes, and let's think about this pastry. Now, we said it was gluten free, which it is, but also, I don't know if you guys have noticed, it's in a cake tin. Yes. Something you cook a sponge in which um, is different, but I think is great because you've, you, know, you can use it for your bakery at home and use it for pies, okay? It's the same principle of a regular pastry. Here I've got some cooked off mince. So I could put ordinary pastry in a cake Oh too. yeah, definitely, definitely. Normal short crust will work fine with this. So this has obviously just been pre-cooked mince. It's had that, that 15 minutes that we needed, okay? I'll just pop that in there. Linda, can I, I give you that? Give, you Thank you. You're that. my commie chef today. I'm loving this. I know. I'm, I'm getting into this now. <laughs> right. So there we have it. I've got a pastry top, which has just been part rolled out. Okay. So we just make this a tiny bit bigger. And then we're going to get the pastry. And as you can see, look, you see how it's a little bit more wetter than yeah, regular pastry, more, but no you good can to stretch me. it. Watch. Over the top, any bits like that that overhang, fill in the gap but you have got to work quicker with this. Yeah. And you don't want it too cold. Should I crack this egg? Yeah, that would be fantastic. That's gonna be our glaze. And all I'm gonna do is give it a pinch all around the outside, a little bit more there. So you've not had it in the fridge or anything? Really? I did do, but if you have it in the fridge too long, it goes too hard. And then because of the electricity, like you said, it doesn't roll as well. Yeah. Okay, so you want it out at room temp. Linda, you you're that. a star. Let's get that egg over the top and then an additional 15 to 20 minutes in the oven, a couple of little bricks in there just for some, uh, let the air escape. In that goes, and look at this. Oh, that looks beautiful. Looks like pastry. It yeah. looks like pastry. Off with the top. Oh, oh, that. Oh, looks yeah. like pie. I think this is fantastic. I th I'd yeah. much rather have this look, wouldn't you? Yeah, I, it, you, you can tell, lemon. but it's going to be in the taste, gentlemen, as well, isn't it? So let's. Uh, yeah, but it's also good because it's less fattening. True, but so look, I could eat more. There you go. Look, see, it's not too crumbly. Yeah. Linda, oh, could you put that plate in front? Absolutely, yeah, that would be fantastic. Oh, okay, nice. now let's get a good old wedge. Oh, it that. looks large. On, before, on that goes there. <laughs>
And we're serving this, we're keeping it real, we're keeping nice it traditional. For nice for Why children, not? two Look, peas. A pile of peas. Mm -hmm. And then I've got some lovely buttery mashed potato. And then oh. it's just going to be oh, some I of see. that on there, off to the side. And gentlemen, I'd love to know your comments on this one and try that pastry, Ross. And uh, let, me, let, me have a, let me have a know what you think about that one and how different it is. Ta-da! I think a cheers to the chef. We a salute Absolutely. to the chef. Yeah. Cheers, cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank, you. Thank you. If you fancy making that delicious beef and potato pie, gently fry some carrots, onions, celery and garlic. Add your minced beef, followed by some potato and a bit of flour. Then drop in a good dollop of beef extract, a blob of tomato ketchup, a splash of Worcester sauce and a glug of stock. Add a pinch of salt, then lower the heat and cook for 15 to 20 minutes. When that's ready, put your mince into the pastry case. Place on the pastry top, a brush of egg glaze and into the oven. Serve with some lovely peas and buttery mash. Wonderful. Come on, Ross. Give us your thoughts. This is mine, where's yours? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Oh, this looks, they looks amazing, that pastry, doesn't it? What pudding would we have? I think because it's quite, it's quite heavy and substantial and rich, then why not go with like a lemon meringue or something like that? I think that'd ah, be nice. Now, I happen to know that your, your head chef, Dee, yeah. is queen of lemon meringue. She is. Is she? Is she? Yeah. How is it? Well, it's gone quiet. <laughs> yes, it it's gone oh. very quiet, I need yeah. to tell you. Let's yeah. try the pastry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, lovely. Does that work? It does work. It does work. I'm surprised, actually. A success! Yay! Well, yeah. that's it today from Country House Sunday. What a lovely day I've had. Join me next week when we'll be peeking behind the doors of more beautiful stately homes. Bye-bye. A success, I feel. Very good. In fact, yeah. so much so, I better just taste a little bit more.